We are back at my little corner office. Well, not really a corner. Anyways, we're back here uh, for November 2024 production updates. We got lots of news to share. Starting off, we have ramped up production for alt mills and we have shipped almost 80, I think 78 machines so far uh, for October, which is a pretty big jump from last month. Uh, we got a lot of parts in allowing it to ship uh, a large number of machines and that pretty much clears up the main second batch. Right now we're waiting on parts for batch th three, which will be about 200 more alt mills. We have a lot of the parts here already, but um, we are waiting for the X rails and the extrusions for the body of the alt mill to arrive so we can start assembly again. That's expected to arrive November 4th. so. It'll be about a week or two until we uh, resume shipping again, but we are continuing to work on pre-packing all the stuff that we have and so on and so forth. Sorry, I should specify batch one is the first 200 machines. We shipped out 50 at the beginning as like kind of a beta test batch and then another 150 after that. And so we finished that first 200 machines. Now we're working on batch two. Sometimes I get confused with batch one, two and three because Sometimes people call batch one the first 50. 50 should be part of batch one and the 150 is like the second part of batch one. We're expecting to ship all t the total of um, 400 alt mills before the end of the year. We have about 50 more alt mills left in batch two, which means that if you are wanting to get in th on that batch, you should place an order as soon as we can. We are letting people know like it might take until January if we run into delays to get that batch of machines, but if we are able to accomplish all the goals that we have for production, we should be able to get all of those machines out by the end of the year. There was a delay that happened in October because of a change in microchip on the VFD that we weren't aware of. What that caused is for the communication between the control board and the, uh, and the VFD to not work properly. Once we had found that issue, we were able to get a new set of VFDs in, in a week and a half. So we were delayed at the beginning of October to start shipping those parts. However, we've resolved that issue and we have all the parts coming in to make sure we have all the VFDs set up with the right chips. The good news for that is also that we've learned a lot on the communication protocols between the v different VFDs and the controllers that we use, which means that in the future, we expect that the stability of using any VFD over Modbus and RS-485 will be more stable. There's some, still stuff we're working through to improve the stability, but in theory, uh, we'll be able to use both different types of chips and make, uh, make the communication compatible with other VFDs better as well. That being said, the, new, the, the chips that we're shipping out right now work 100% um, without any issues, so customers shouldn't have any issues with the communication or the spindles that they're getting at this moment. We also did get a number of people who had uh, wiring issues for the spindle, whether it be turning the wrong way. We've set up some new QA systems and a new station to do the assembly for the VFDs and the uh, spindles and the cables as well. And so with our new testing procedure, we should not have that issue anymore. I don't think the we had too many people with that issue, but obviously it can be a safety issue. So with the new process, that will eliminate that potential problem as well. Right now, we have finished batch one. Now we're going into batch two production. Uh, we're going to start building and shipping those out first week of November. As those next 200 machines are shipping, we're also working on producing another 200, uh, 200 to 250 more alt mills on top of that. And so right now we're in the manufacturing stage for some major components such as the extrusions and the machine components. For the extrusion, we've run into a lot of problems with the tolerance and the precision of the extruded parts. And so to mitigate issues from happening again, we're working with several other extruder manufacturers to kind of diversify our manufacturing across different co companies so that one, we can produce the parts faster uh, because right now the lead times are quite high. And also we can pick and choose the best quality extrusions and also have contingencies for issues as well. Uh, the machine components are also going through the same vetting process where we're working with several different manufacturers. One, because one of the manufacturers that we've been working with, they are not having a great 
well, it's been more difficult for them to keep up with the, the uh, volume of components that we've been producing. So by diversifying and working with multiple manufacturers, we're able to spread that workload over more companies. While we're working on uh, the new extrusions and the new rails, we are also starting to get more into figuring out the production for the 2x4 alt mill. We've seen a lot of people interested in that. You can check out the videos that we have on YouTube about it. Obviously, the 4x4, I believe, will be very popular because it can handle the larger sheets. But if you have a more limited workspace in your garage, the uh, smaller machine can obviously fill in that spot as well. In other other news, uh, we also have been testing the uh, auto tool changer systems, uh, both on the software side as well as on the hardware side. Uh, we just set up the tool changer spindle on one of the alt mills and playing around with that as well. It is pretty complicated and we don't have any particular schedule or news on if that's going to be an available option. Where one, we want to make sure that it's compatible if uh, users do are inclined to add the kits themselves, either from third party vendors, but we can confirm that the auto tool changer works and the systems that we've tested are functional. And so we have the whole ecosystem to allow us to be able to uh, support auto tool changer on alt mill as well. Long mill, there's not too much uh, news on the long mill right now. Kits are shipping out within a few days. We have stuff packed up and we have lots of machines available in stock. So if you're looking for a machine, you want to get it right away. Long mill is a great option. Additional to that, we had the same problem with the VFDs getting the long mill spindle kits out. However, uh, that since that's been resolved, we shipped a batch of the long mill spindle kits out already. Uh, we're having a bit of a longer lead time, about four weeks currently for new spindle kits to ship out. And I'm expecting that to get shorter because we're still doing the testing and the assembly for all those components. But yeah, if you're interested in getting a spindle kit as well, those are available on the store as well. Big news last month, we've released the G control panel computer. And this is something that a lot of users have been interested in for a while. Uh, obviously this kind of loops everything together into one ecosystem with the SLB the closed loop steppers and or the well closed loop or open loop steppers as well as the computer providing a full interface for machine control. We just got in yesterday the first 50 computers. Tomorrow we're going to be starting the assembly and programming for those computers. And uh, if you order them early, you may be on that uh, first group of 50. I believe we sold over 120 so far. I'm working on the second batch of computers to, so that they're ready to ship by the end of the year. So yeah, check out the video on our YouTube channel and our blog as well. We also came back from the Vectric UGM where I showed off the tablet computer and some of the other cool stuff we've been working on. And uh, we also got to test it on Centroid, which is another CNC con interface control software with the ethernet and that worked flawlessly. I'm also hoping that in the long run, the the G-Control computer is going to be a good option if you are running a different type of machine and you want to run different software to control it, that it can be like a one-stop shop for controlling your machine. The Vortex rotary axis continues to ship as usual. One big thing is that we now are offering the closed loop stepper system. If you guys know, the SLB and the SLB EXT supports full independent four axis motion, which means that if you have the Vortex, you can ha you have two options. One is to be able to plug in an independent driver to control the rotation of the Vortex. Or if you, with our new kit, with the closed up stepper motor, because the stepper motor integrates the driver, you can plug everything together in a pl plug and play kit with the uh, SLB or XL SLB EXT. And that will be able to uh, do full four axis motion as well. If you guys don't know, the original kits with the open loop stepper motors, those you have to switch between the Y axis and the rotary axis, which, which means that when you are doing the rotary part, the Y axis stays in its position. However, now with the full four axis independent motion, the Y axis can move back and forth simultaneously as the vortex rotates, which means that you can do operations where you may like want to flip it 180 degrees and do a two-sided cut or we don't have much information and content about this yet, but basically if you want to do rotation while simultaneously moving the X, Y, and Z axis together, you can do that. Like the hardware will support it. 
we just had to figure out the software side of it. And obviously, if you're doing any traditional uh, rotary axis projects that such as the ones that we have on tutorials in our web uh, on our website and on our YouTube channel, then those will seamlessly integrate as well, except you don't have to flip between the two modes manually anymore. It'll all be done through the software. Big news for the laser beam. Um, we have now released the magnetic mount for the laser beam. So if you guys don't know, the laser beam mounts with two screws at the front or side of the router mount of your CNC machine. With the uh, new magnetic mount, which is here, you're able to uh, attach and detach the uh, laser with the magnets so there's no screws involved. This is good because for users that switch between laser and CNC functions, it makes it easy because it saves some time removing it. And so we expect uh, this to be shipping out pretty soon. And this should save a little bit of time when plugging in and taking on and off your laser to keep it protected during cutting operations. Otherwise, laser beams ship out within a couple days. We have new driver boards on the way, laser mounts and all the other. We're restocking on lasers currently, so um, there should we should keep pretty stable lead times for that uh, product. So yeah, keep an eye out for all this new stuff as well. As you guys might know, last update, I mentioned that we're not calling the router the sprouter anymore because someone else called it the sprouter. So I'll just call it the PWM controllable router for now. So we have received our first prototypes of the semi-production ready version of the PWM controllable router. And if you guys don't know, basically it's similar to the Makita router, except you can control the speed and the on and off electronically through the control board, which means that it kind of shares functionality as a spindle where with a spindle, you can set the spindle speed and it'll get to that speed so you can cut with it and it'll turn off after you finish the cut. The PW controllable router is a affordable alternative to a spindle. If you check out our website, um, the blog, we, Johan sent me a video where as it's cutting, it's playing music by basically changing the speed of the router as it's moving, you can get different tones. And if you guys are coming to the Hamilton Wordworking Show this weekend, we will have demos of that as well. So yeah, make sure to check it out if you're gonna be there. Right now we're working through the last part of the production planning and we're aiming to start production at the end of this year so that we can ship in first quarter of 2025. We'll have more up updates about that coming out. And we're also doing a naming com contest pretty soon as well. I don't think I missed anything. If you want to learn more, check out more pictures, details, make sure to check out our blog because that's where I write everything. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next update.